let's make some leather. So first let's look at some reference images. Here's a close-up shot of leather. As you can see the diffuse map is pretty pretty even. You might say you can use a simple color for it. But the main features are the bump map. Look at this leather grain that is clearly visible. And probably the reflect map, as the reflections are not perfect as well. So here's another example. Again, the diffuse color is pretty even, so you could use a simple color or a noise map in the diffuse slot. But the reflections and bump map will need to be made separately. So here's an example of suede leather. This is much less reflective and it has some of uh, fabric properties in that these fuzzy parts that are facing perpendicularly to your view direction they are a bit lighter. So you might want to use a fall off map in the diffuse slot for this. Okay. So here's another example of a very clean reflective leather. So again, slight bump with the leather grain, solid color as the diffuse color, and some blurry reflections. Here's a crocodile leather. Here you might use a different bump texture, something that simulates this crocodile effect. Here's an extreme example. Uh, old worn leather. The diffuse map here is a bit more complicated. We can clearly see the color variation here. Also notice this effect on, on inner corners where, where there is darkening of the leather going on. So you might want to use a nice, nice texture, custom made texture for this with some very dirt effect on these corners here. So the bump is also very strong and probably you would make a custom bump map for this. Okay, here's another clean example. Here this leather is a bit more blurry. I mean the reflections are a bit more blurry. If you have this object nicely unwrapped you can draw a custom bump map in Photoshop so you don't need to make these wrinkles in, in 3D modeling app. You can make them in Photoshop. If you don't have the unwrapping done you might want to model these <coughs> for more realism. Here's another ex extremely worn leather example. Here you definitely need, uh, need to create a diffuse texture for this. And here's another close-up. You can see the leather grain very clearly here. There is a small pattern repeating all over the object and some larger these stripes lines in some places. So okay, let's get started. So first we're going to, going to create some leather grain texture. So I'm going to go to cgtextures.com and find some leather. So it's under the fabrics, leather, and here are some nice images. So I'm just gonna find some, uh, something that I like. I think this might be interesting. Yes, I'm going to use this one. Okay, what else? Perhaps this one for the longer, or longer creases, or this one. Okay, so I'm going to download the largest version. 
and open it up in Photoshop. Okay, so first I will desaturate it. You don't need no color for the bump map. And now I will invert this image because right now the darkest parts are where where the bumps should actually go up instead of down. So invert with control plus I and adjust the levels. Okay, perhaps something like this. Okay, we'll probably try a slight median filter. And reduce the size to 1000. Okay, we'll sharpen this back up. Okay, so now let's create a tileable version of this texture. Select everything, copy, press Alt, Alt Control C to increase the canvas size. And let's increase it by 100% in both directions. Just paste and move, move the pasted layers to corners. Like this. Okay, let's merge these together. I'm going to crop this image to square format. Like this. So now I want to get rid of the seams, like usual, I will use the clone stamp tool. I'll try high hardness for this because the pattern is pretty crisp and pretty small. Okay, now let's offset it. And clean up the seams again. Okay, so this is ready. I will probably try to add some more more creases to it. And this will be too rough. I'll try this one. Okay. Let's make it tileable. Crop it to square. Desaturate give it more contrast with levels. Okay, select all, copy, increase the size by 100% in both directions, paste in the corners. And clean up the seams.
Okay, I'm gonna try to offset it to see the seeds on seams on the sides. And just gets rid of them. Okay. Now copy everything and paste on top of this image. I'm gonna change the size with free trans transform to match it perfectly. So since they are both tileable, they should tile pretty nicely together as well. So I'm gonna try some different blending modes. Try to increase the contrast with levels for this second layer. Like this. Okay, so that should be our pretty basic bump map. Let's save it as a PNG file. And go to 3D Max. Okay, so let's create a basic clean black leather material. So I'm going to create a new area material and make my diffuse color very dark, almost black. So drag and drop on the object here. And here's how it looks. So now we need to look at a reference image and determine the reflectivity of this material. So you can see that it reflects pretty well, but the reflections are pretty blurry. So something like this. Uh, let's give it some reflections. I'm going for a medium value, something like 100. Enable Fresnel. For leather I would use something like 3.5. And now I will use the reflection glossiness to make the reflections blurrier. Okay. So maybe something like this. I think the reflections are too strong for black. So let's try, try lowering this value here. Okay. So very smooth reflections right now, it looks a bit like plastic. So to make it look more like leather, we're going to use our bump map first. So cancel the render, and I'm going to my maps and bump, and assign the texture we created. So here it is. Let's see it on the model. Okay, probably need to increase the tiling. So you can see it appears rougher already. Hmm. 
maybe it needs to be a bit stronger. So I will increase the bump value to let's say 60 and try again. So there is a nice leather effect going on here. You can notice in the reflections that they are a bit uh, broken up by the texture of bump. So this is a super basic black leather. Let's try using this bump map in the reflect slot as well to see what happens. Perhaps it will be more interesting. I will reduce the reflect value because it's a bit too bright. So first I'm going to set the reflections to very dark grey. Since I have set the reflect texture to 50, it will be mixed at 50% with the reflect color. I think this looks a bit better. You can notice the leather pattern here. Previously it was not as well, uh, not as visible uh, like now. Okay. And maybe a final touch for this material would be adding some fractal noise to the bump map. So I will change the bump map to mix keep old map as submap and mix it with a noise map like this so I will enable fractal set the levels to 5 and try mixing at 50 okay less 20 and perhaps increase the size of noise like this Let's see how it looks in render. Not too visible. Let's increase the bump. 120. And re-render. Okay, now you can notice the noise here. The surface doesn't look so flat anymore. I think I might need to lower the size of noise. Try 40. So now it's too strong. So let's adjust our mix amount and try 5. So there's just a hint of this noise map here and reduce bump back to 60. Okay, so now it's just slightly visible. So this is a basic black leather material. You can change how blurry are the specular highlights by changing the reflection glossiness value. So if you want a shinier leather, you can increase the glossiness. If you want it to be more blurry, you can decrease it. You can also change how reflective this is by lowering this value here in the reflect slot and lowering the reflect amount for this bitmap here. So now it's less reflective. And a bit more shiny. So depending on the leather you want to emulate, you can adjust these values and get the results pretty easily. So this is a shinier leather version.
Okay, let's rename this to like shiny and copy to another slot. So if you wish to create a different colored leather, you can either adjust the diffuse color, for example let's try brown, you can use a custom texture in the diffuse slot. Okay, so let's create something more interesting. So let's go back to CG textures and look at these leather photographs. So how about a nice worn suede leather like this. So what we're going to do is create a custom diffuse texture. So I will download a couple of photographs, open them in Photoshop, And let's combine these together. And this is a bit lighter, so I'm going to reduce the lightness probably better to try and do it with curves. Okay, and let's merge the layers together. Copy the texture. paste and move to the side. Ok, I'm going to erase this border and crop to a square size. Ok, like this. Smudge down, copy everything. And the size is probably too large reduce it, so copy everything, increase the canvas size, and let's try to make it a bit more even. Try clone stamp tool and reduce the hardness. Okay, let's fix the seams on the side now. Use the offset filter.
adding some more irregularities to the texture. So maybe let's add some patches like this. Open with Photoshop. And copy this area here. Just paste in our image. Play around with the blending mode. Saturate it a bit so it matches better. Okay, and now using the eraser tool, with some interesting brushes, I'm going to erase the borders a bit. down with the clone stamp tool and add some more patches around the texture. Sharpen it a bit. And boost the contrast with Curves tool. CG textures. I'm gonna try this one. Okay, here's a tiling version already. I'm gonna take the large one, copy it, and paste over this one here. Okay, free transform, match the size, and try some blending modes. Okay, merge down. Desaturate and let's save it. I'm also going to create a black and white version of this. Go 
was the contrast for this one. And say was the bump map. Okay. Back to 3D Max and create a new VRA material. So let's assign the diffuse bitmap we created and drag and drop on the object. See how it looks. Let's increase the tiling to a large. Okay, like this. Very nice. Let's give it the bump map now. Here it is, 3 by 3 like this. I think we need to invert it, because the scratches go up instead of down, look here. So let's check the invert box, ok, it looks better. And I'm going to try to disable bitmap filtering for this. Okay. So right now it looks a bit flat. To fix that, uh, let's give it some light reflections and slightly fuzzy edges. So let's copy our bump map to the reflect slot as well. Set it at 10. I will turn off, turn on the filtering for this again. There's some area. So the reflections are very, very blurred. Look here, they are very weak and very, very blurred. So I'm going to try 0.55, even 0.5, and Fresnel with 3. So this might work. And now I will try to give it the fuzzy edges by using the fall of map in the diffuse slot. So go to the diffuse slot, change the bitmap to fall of, keep bitmap as sub submap, and copy it to the second slot as well. Okay, decrease the second slot value to mix it with white. Perhaps give some tint to the white color. something like this. And now try to adjust the curve to bring this effect more to the sides. Okay, like this. So let's see it. Notice the slightly white edge here. Gives the leather a bit softer appearance. Okay. Now one more thing I want to do is give this material some wrinkles. So I think I'm going to use the same bitmap we used for the fabrics. So go to the bump slot, change it to mix, keep old map as submap, and set another bitmap in the second slot. 
So fabrics, fabrics folds. Some nice folds. Okay, let's see it. Increase the tiling a bit. Let's try it like this. Mix of 50. And increase the bump value. Okay, maybe mix it 75. Like this. Okay. Let's see it. Maybe just going to make the texture a bit darker. So this is a dark patchy suede material. I think it looks pretty good. Okay, let's try to create a distressed leather now. just searching for some textures or photographs in Google image search. Not many results here. Try and find old leather. Okay. So vintage leather. Okay, I have some some photos I can use. Perhaps this one has the most potential. So I'm going to copy it. Create a new image in Photoshop and paste. Okay. So first I'm going to increase the canvas size. I'm trying to get a square texture. Paste again and rotate the image like this. Okay. Now just delete the border. Merge down. Let's get rid of the borders. We 
with the clone stamp tool, close up the seams. everything down, copy and increase the canvas size by 100% in both directions. as our base. So back to the Firefox. What else do we have? Let's make this one tileable. Copy image, open up in Photoshop. The offset filter to make it tileable. I'm gonna use a pretty high hardness value. Copy, increase the canvas size. And paste in the corners. I'm just gonna try and make it a bit less repetitive. and paste on top of this base. Let's increase the size to fit this image. And try some blending. multiply version I'm gonna merge down and adjust the curves to make it brighter again CG textures. Maybe there's something here.
let's see this one. Make a square crop. Copy. Paste here. Increase the size. Give it some more contrast. Desaturate. And try some blending modes. Like this, okay. Other other offset. Let's see the seams. down, saturate a bit and make it a bit brighter. Okay, Let's save it. And create a black and white version as well. I think I'm going to invert it like this. Okay. So back to our scene. Let's create a new VRA material. I'm rather distressed. And assign the diffuse map. Okay, drag and drop. Increase the tiling. I think this might be a bit too patchy. So I'm gonna even out the color by creating a new layer. Filling with uh, brown. Just set it at fifty. Resave. And back to 3D Max. Okay, so here's the base. Let's give it some bump. So here's our bump map. 
set it three by three and increase the strength to 60 like this okay let's copy it to the reflect slot as well set it at 20 and blur the reflections enable Fresnel set to 3.5 let's see how it looks I guess it's a bit too rough, especially the bump and reflection. So I'm going to adjust that now. So let's set the reflect color not black, but slightly gray to give the reflections to the whole material. Reduce the bump to 20 and re render. Reflections are still too strong. So I'm going to reduce the reflect to 10. again okay now let's give it some bump, I mean some folds and creases. So mix the bump map with, with our folds texture from fabrics here. Start at 50. Re render. You can also use a bitmap in the reflection glossiness slot to make the reflections a bit more interesting. So let's do that. Go to reflection, reflection glossiness and choose bitmap. I'm going to use one of my dirt maps here. For example, Okay, let's try this one. And reduce it to mix with the color in the slot. Like this.
So now the reflections are a bit patchier, which is a good thing in this example. I think I need to up the bump value. Let's try an even hundred. Okay, so the last step for this material would probably be darkening of the edges on the inside and on the outside. You can see this effect here, here, around the edges. So I'm going to use the V-Ray Dirt Map to do that. Okay. So what I'm going to do is change my diffuse map to V-Ray Dirt. Okay, make sure you keep the old map as submap and move it from the radius slot to the unoccluded color slot. So I'm going to set the occluded color to bright green just so I can see where the effect is going on. So this is with the default settings. So it works nicely for the inner corners. Everything that's green is going to become the occluded color I choose, probably something very dark or black even. Okay, and I want to add another layer of v dirt, and this time for the outside edges. So what I'm going to do is copy the diffuse, the diffuse map and paste in the unoccluded color slot. Paste and go inside. Okay, so this is another layer of v dirt. I'm going to invert normals on this one and try a smaller value like 5. Okay, let's try a red color for this. Okay, so now you can see a slight problem here all this thin side area is using the occluded color with inverted normals and that is because it is thinner than 5 centimeters and everything becomes dirty. So to fix that we need to create a new copy of this material with a slight change, reduced radius for the V-Ray Dirt. So we need to use two materials for this particular object. For some objects you might, you might be just fine with a single material. So I'm gonna try to give a radius bitmap first. So let's try this one. Okay, and let's try this one. So first, first what I'm making sure is that the material is finished. Actually I might make these edges a bit lighter simulate the fact that they are worn out. So 
So the occluded color might be something like this for this layer. radius and try again mm, too much let's get back to five Too little. Let's try six point five. Perfect. And now let's fix the and the green parts, let's make them black. Okay, so this looks pretty good. Now we just need to make a copy of this material for the sides. So I'm going to drag and drop in a new slot and go into the V-Ray Dirt second layer and change the radius to something smaller than the thickness of this object. Let's try 0.5. Perfect. Looks just fine now. So if the sides were thicker you probably wouldn't need to use two materials but since they are so thin this is a slight inconvenience. Okay so a very nice distressed old leather material here. You can change the color by changing the diffuse color in uh, Photoshop. You can change the reflections bump. There is a great and great great control available over this. Okay. So let's create one more material for leather. The crocodile. I saw a nice texture here in CG textures. It's already tiled. So I'm going to open it up in Photoshop. Reduce the saturation. And invert it. Okay, just to give it some more contrast now. Now I will select these lightest colors. They would probably need to be black. Okay, now first I'm going to expand the selection by 3 pixels. Okay, or by 5. And now I'm going to feather them 
make a blurry transition here. So by three pixels, okay? Create a new layer and fill with a black color. So I guess this would probably work fine. I'm just gonna sharpen it. And try to offset to see if there are some problems. Okay, it looks just fine. Okay, let's save it. create a color version now. Create a new layer. Actually we can just revert or no. Okay, go back and do undo undo undo. And here it is. Okay, let's just change the color of this. Let's try some brown crocodile. a bit more contrast. Let's reduce the saturation a bit. Okay, like this. And save. Okay, back to 3D Max. Create a new VRA material and let's name it Leather Crocodile. So first the diffuse map. Here it is. Let's see it on the model. Need to increase styling. 2 by 2 should work fine. And next, the, and the bump. Okay, here we go. Again, 2 by 2 tiling. Let's make it stronger. Okay. So here's an example of crocodile leather. You can see it's pretty shiny. So let's give it some reflections now. Go to reflect and increase the value. Okay, enable Freno, 3.5. And let's reduce the glossiness to blur the reflections. Okay, now, now it appears the reflections are too strong. Let's turn them down. And maybe turn down the bump as well. Okay. So let's test it out. Okay, it looks pretty decent. Perhaps the reflections are a bit too sharp. I'm going to try 0 0.8. So if you have a nice bump texture, making a crocodile leather material is pretty easy. And the one on CG textures is very nice for this. Okay, maybe a bit higher bump and even blurrier reflections. Just so we can see the leather better. Very nice. So to change the color, 
simply go to Photoshop and adjust your texture. And create a new layer, fill it with a color. Change the blending modes. Like this. So that's a light brown crock. You can make it white, you can make it black or whatever you need. So that's a crocodile leather. Okay, let's create some uh, other interesting letters. Okay, let's create a gold or silver letter. So here's how it looks. So basically Use the same same leather, but with nice gold reflections. So how do you do that? It's very simple. Let's copy our basic black leather material. Name it to leather gold. And change the reflect color to bright yellow orange. Okay, reduce the reflect texture. Maybe reduce the glossiness a bit. Okay, let's see how it looks. So that's a gold leather material. So basically the texture of the leather is still visible in the bump and the gold color is only affecting the reflections. Nothing more to it. Let's mix the bump map with our folds. So here are the folds. Let's mix it 17. And increase the bump amount like this. So a nice gold leather material. You can change it to silver simply by desaturating, desaturating the reflect color. So pretty simple. And I guess that's it for leather.